Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an FUP1A. Yes, it's a German product. That's just how it is. So everything here is uh, written in yeah, German on the front. So I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I just happened to be able to read this. So I think I should be able to figure this out. <laughs> the fun thing is this unit is from uh, 1973. And uh, it is in a little bit of a sad, sad state, as you can see. Let's try and compare a picture I found on a radio museum. And then you'll be able to see that they don't really look exactly the same. We got a few um, knobs missing and some are the wrong types as well. We also got a lamp down here that is probably not original. So I think I have to uh, open and inspect first because again, it looks quite corroded and uh, it's falling halfway to pieces and stuff like that. And I don't like just to plug in mains and see how much it uh, blows up. But let me just fast explain what this can do. So this is a radio test set. It will be able to test in three different frequency bands from 65 to 80 and from 80 to 95 and see, and then it skips the FM band and then we go to the VHF or the two meter band for radio communications and radio amateurs. Um, so the start of this is of course the two meter band for radio amateurs. And this is of course why I got this one from a radio amateur flea market or something like that. And uh, yeah, this is why they do circulate in a uh, hobby. Yeah among hobby dudes, radio amateurs. So this is a test generator for the receiver. It says here it's a receiver test sender. So this one will generate a weak signal so that you can uh, test your receiver's uh, sensitivity. And then you can also test your uh, transmitter's uh, frequency. And I think it works uh, like this, where you put it into this mode up here for this. And then you dial the right frequency and then you search for a peak. So it's uh, yeah, quite, quite simple really for that. And then you have a dummy load, a two watt and uh, 20 watt dummy load where you can read out the transmitter's power. You also have an audio signal generator and I also believe this signal generator is used to add modulation to your test center. But you can also use this uh, oscillator as a standalone oscillator. And that is how you set up the different voltages and all that kind of stuff right here. So all in all, let's try and open it and inspect it first. So now I'm inside and having a little look and of course it is full of, I don't know what that is, that is of course corrosion and uh, we've got two little batteries, I think there'll be two 6 volts uh, lead acid batteries, so they're connected in series for 12 volts and they look like it's the original size, maybe I can remove them like that. The other cable goes to a uh, loudspeaker that is mounted here. Oh, that is mounted up here in the... Come on man, how does it take that long? So here's a little loudspeaker. And uh, I also inspected a little bit the state and health of everything in here. I will go a little bit more into detail, but so far, as you can see here, 
Yeah, I need to go through a little bit of uh, cleaning and so on. I also need to, yeah, that is a nice dummy load here in the middle. I need to open that nice oscillator box. Well, that looks it's like it's painted brass. Look at that. That is a little bit odd. So the two batteries, they are 6 volts, so that will be 12. But if I look at the schematic, they talk about 18 volts. So uh, maybe this is a little bit different model. Let's look a little bit on the internal parts and the build quality. The first thing that I really like is actually the directional coupler. Remember the two PL connectors uh, from the on the front? So this is where you put your transmitter and then you have an output to your antenna, for example. You can also connect the output um, for your antenna directly to the dummy load. So this one should be able to handle about 20 watts. So there's a big ceramic power resistor in here. So this is the directional coupler. There is a feeder inside here. There is a perfect 50 ohm feed point. And then there's an end coupler with diodes and capacitors, resistors and such rectifying the forward and the reflected level. So you have a power meter and then you can select to measure yeah, your transmitted power and stuff like that. So pretty nice made big hefty cable for high power. About the um, signal generator. So this is the band switch. It is a common carousel switch and it, this is exactly the same type you will find in television sets. Uh, I mean, it's clearly exactly the same type. Uh, this unit is from about 1970, 70 something in the start of the 70s. And this is exactly <laughs> the one I've been <laughs> looking at in many of the television sets when I was a kid. So that's so funny. This one is very, very difficult to change and you can see we only got three see three of the of the contacts mounted and that's because this unit just supports three bands but there's nothing that should stop you from adding more bands just click in some more of these contacts and start winding up your own inductors and capacitors and stuff like that down here that selects all the different frequencies. So this is the tuning capacitor for the oscillator and down here is the field effect transistor BF245 or something like that. And uh, yeah that's uh, how the oscillator is uh, located. And there is uh, yeah the classic gearboxes and, and all that kind of stuff. A little wire here to do all the Gear ratio and whatnot. This is the RF output connector and it goes to a variable resistor attenuator. That one, it's also a very, very classic design. And that goes up th uh, yeah, through this into the oscillator case. And look at that. Here is a resistor that is not connected. And it was supposed to be connected to that solder point there. So this explains why there was no output at all. So I hope this is the problem I need to solve. And then it should be up and running. I've of course been inspecting the mains input fuse. <laughs> They're always corroded. I think they consist of some sort of a special alloy or something like that. They just really don't like humidity. And look at the thin flimsy wires. This is not approved by today's standards. Going through a metal hole down there in the box and no isolation, no plastic or anything at all. Again, single isolation and then straight to metal. Oops, also not allowed. 
so here will be all the IF stuff is here. So this is the receiver and detector for testing your transmitter and this is for testing your receiver. This is the generator and this is all the detector and demodulator and all that kind of stuff. And it's of course able to drive the loudspeaker so you can hear what is going on. Down here is the mains transformer. And that will be, of course, the power supply and such. Funny with all those. So yeah, I have to go and carefully check and clean everything here, I guess. But I think I will be able to power this up real soon. Oh, look at all that. Not made for vibrations or anything like that. Here is the block schematic of the FUP1A. Let's start with the bottom left corner. So that is the main entry. And then there is a, uh, yeah, the on off switch is a three possession of switch. And uh, that one is a little bit scary to say it <laughs> in a nice way. I'll show you in a second uh, why I mean that is a little bit scary. But as you can see, mains goes into two of the sections, then the transformer, and then there is rectifier, um, power supply, and charge system for the battery. In this schematic, it says 18 volts of battery, and then there is a bulb and on-off uh, system, more or less in the different sections of the switch. So here is that switch, that one here. So this is 230 volts. And first of all, look at all the wire mess. It's just hanging and dingly dangly all over the place. There's also a wire here. I don't know what that is. That is probably some disabled charge or the battery somehow disabled. That will be the battery wires I cut when removing the batteries, because of course we're not going to use batteries. But look at that. Thin, thin, super flimsy um, mains. And then here is an, a little wire assembly. I don't know if that is, yes, that little black one here. So it was cut by mistake. And I think this is a little modification somebody made and that guy accidentally cut the mains cables and tried to solder it back together so there's a little board and a little add-on something whatever he did and that is also this little extra bulb whatever that is doing back to the power switch look at that mains voltage here right and that will be battery voltage the other one, and look at that distance here. I'll try and rotate the switch while we have it like this. So let's see if I can show you what is going on. And then here, look at that. And if I push it, see, just a little bit like that. And this is easy to do. See, now the distance from the battery to mains is zero point something millimeters. Uh-huh, that is not how you would do this today if you would like to pass any kind of approvals for safety, that is for sure. So we got three positions of this switch. In the middle, everything is off, and then it is charging and on, and then it is on, on battery. So that's the three Section uh, positions of that switch, <laughs> scary. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but I, I think I do dare to power this up in a few seconds. And let's go back to the block diagram. We got some uh, main features here, and that is the um, audio frequency uh, generator uh, in the middle to the left, and then we have 
the uh, mass center, so that is the uh, measuring uh, generator that uh, can generate a signal for, to test your radio's sensitivity. And uh, let's go to the upper right corner of the block diagram. This is, uh, they call it the hoop mesa, but that is of course a test receiver. It's not exactly a test receiver. Uh, I will uh, explain you in a very short uh, second what it is really. And then in the bottom right, you see the power coupler, the directional coupler and the dummy load. That will be uh, the three uh, PL259s in the middle of the unit where you can uh, put your RF power uh, uh, in and out and uh, to your dummy load. And that is a very uh, wide frequency range, far beyond what is uh, normally um, capable of this unit. And uh, yeah, that's more or less what this is doing. On page two of the schematics, we see a more detailed um, diagram of uh, the power supply, charge, and then there is a voltage regulator for the system. And it also shows a little bit uh, better detail on um, all the different positions of the on-off switch and all that. And then there is a little voltmeter that drives or the, the, the voltmeter uh, amplifier, the meter amplifier that uh, drives the, the media meter, obviously. And then we have uh, the one kilohertz audio sine wave generator. On page three of the schematics, in the upper left, we see the main oscillator that is used uh, for injection or for mixing um, the, the, the signal that you want to measure. And it also says uh, that it's a mixer diode. Uh, this is the D201. So that is actually how you mix uh, your incoming signal with your main oscillator. They're just gated directly into a diode to generate um, the sum and difference. And then it goes into a um, direct conversion amplifier system that just amplifies the IF and uh, that's all there is uh, to it with uh, four sections of amplification. And then this signal um, is then coupled to the meter or it is uh, also coupled to a little amplifier. So you can hear this in the, in the speaker. So yeah, that was the last uh, page of the schematic. So now that we understand the unit, it's easier to, uh, to look here again. Here is the oscillator with the three preset ranges. You can of course put uh, more or less ranges in this one. And this is exactly what they tried to do. They removed the stop screw here to prevent it uh, yeah, from only having uh, three ranges. You can just plug in some more of these. And uh, yeah, here is the main oscillator. We got some transistors somewhere here to, to handle all this oscillator stuff. You can also uh, get the FUP, 1A in a 400 megahertz version and uh, depending on yeah this this is a this is of course not that version by the way but anyway this is the IF the four sections of IF with a little bit of amplification in between and this also looks a little bit different uh, compared to the schematics I already shown here it's the transistor version you also got one uh, with some ICs for amplification and all that and that will be the audio amplifier if, if I'm not uh, mistaken and that is um, yeah that is more or less how the test receiver uh, works and how it's looking so yeah we better go and uh, power this up and see if it's gonna blow any fuses so let's try the first uh, power up I think I left everything in on position I tried to Connect my scope and stuff like that, and we'll see if there's any bad things happening. Let's turn on mains and slowly crank up the voltage. Look at that! Ah. Let's get up to 200 and 
20 walls. So far, so good. And I also see the signal on my scope. That is lovely. This is uh, 982 kilohertz, so it's not too bad. So here is the RF output. I am in HF test sender mode, and this should, of course, then be the test sender, right? I am also in the 140 to 175 megahertz uh, frequency range and look what we got here we got output and this is 144 megahertz and that was uh, exactly my intention i wanted to see how how this all affects how about we find a radio so here's a little handy just put it into a random channel in the middle of the two meter band so let's just hear what happens. I should be able to, yes. <laughs> exactly. But anyway. It seems like it's working so far. <laughs> How funny is that? Is there a way? Yeah, of course I can adjust how much of the modulation I want. Or I can, this is of course uh, the internal modulation. I can of course use external modulation. I think so, right? So, yeah. Now I'll see if I can get the receiver part of it uh, up and running. So here's what I've done. I select now the test receiver and uh, I can go into bandwidth, how sensitive it is with the, uh, on the receiver side. I put, put it down to five kilohertz here. And then again, I select 140 to 175. And then I dialed the frequency band into the two meter band. And then, see? Hello, 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 can you hear me? So, it really works. It's not a lot of audio, but it is definitely working. Very, very nice and funny. And we even have, ooh. Yeah. That is fan. Fantastic. All we now need to do is a lot of cleaning, a lot of new knobs, and uh, make it uh, rise and shine again, as always. Of course, you can see it looks like it was left outside in the rain or whatever. <laughs> it's terrible. But I think I should be able to clean this uh, nice and fine again. Maybe I can find... Um, some of these, um, I think so, that should be possible. So, that is what I wanted to show you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.